Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and we're going to continue the work on the 1931 Ford Model A Roadster. If you've seen the previous videos then you know we had a bad head gasket so that's what we're tackling as well as a valve job and some other stuff. But let's get right back into it. Alright so you may recall from the last video that I had this broken head stud and I needed to get the remains out of there. At the same time, I decided why not do a valve job, as long as we're in there, right? So off comes the valve cover. And of course you want to scrape all the old gaskets off. Get everything nice and clean. And next comes the valve removal itself. Now this is a multi-step process. First of all, I've got this valve spring compressor. And I need to get these keepers off. And they're pretty easy to slide right off once you get the valve spring compressed. Now this valve spring compressor was an eBay purchase and it, it was supposedly for a Model A Ford. It didn't fit quite right, but ultimately I made it work. I just had to hog out the jaws a little bit there and she worked fine. All right, next I wanted to pull all the valves up so that the stems are out of the way so we can remove the springs. And as you see here, it's just a matter of knocking the springs off center and out they come. All right, the next day I was back at it. And now it's time to remove the valves themselves. So this nifty little tool you see here is just to hammer the valve guides out from the top. And I'll put a link below if you want to get one of these yourself for your own Model A. Makes the job super easy. You notice here I've got to rotate the engine to get a little bit more clearance, but then boom, out they come. All right, now with the head stripped and the valves out, we can get down to business. Right here, you see I've cleaned out that valve galley pretty nicely. There's a little bit more to go, but we're most of the way there. All right, next up, Andrew and I installed new valves and guides. And you've got to lap these in. You'll see what I mean. That's easy. The other one's fully up. It's what? The other one's fully up. Alright, here we go. I think that's completely shut, don't you? A little more? A little bit more? Okay. Move your hand. Oh yeah, that's shut. Okay, go ahead, do your thing. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen at some point. You got them even? Mm -hmm. Okay, push it up if you can so I can get my fingers on it. Alright, good. Good? Perfect. Alright. All right, now push down gently. Good. Good. All right, we're ready to lap valves.
You can see here that they weren't all completely seated, but we got there. All right, next it was time to lap the valves, and you can see the technique right here. What we're looking for at the end is a nice, shiny metallic finish on the valve seat. It shouldn't take too much. All the way around until it's all the way it's on the entire valve surface so try to get it a little even but it's not critical because it's going to do its own thing it's gonna move around okay once you've got it on there you're gonna start you you got to be careful because you're gonna end up wiping it off okay now wipe that off your finger with this so it doesn't get on the tool okay now push it push it down okay now like you're starting a fire spin the tool back and forth now hear how it hear that sound do it a little faster did you hear it smooth out see yeah All right, next it's time for all new studs. And I like to use copper anti-seize on fasteners like these where you're gonna have a torque setting and they are unlikely to come apart for many years. And they're also subjected to serious heat cycling. This stud was a little bit off. I'm not sure what was going on there, but anyway, we bent it straight and we we're all good to go. All right, in the meantime, I wanted to show you the bottom end of the engine. And I gotta say, I was pretty impressed by how clean it was when I took the pan off. Now, as you can see, the Model A does not have a counterweighted crank, which means that the engine doesn't run very smooth. They have quite a bit of vibration. Here's a piston skirt and a connecting rod. And then if you look at the Babbitt there, right there, the silvery part, that's the Babbitt bearing. So, you know, that's an alloy that they pour. They actually pour bearings and then they machine them to the right specification. There's not insert bearings on this motor. Anyway, all the Babbitt looks really good from the outside. I, I didn't take any bearing caps off. I had no reason to believe that uh, there was any problem there. I'd already run the engine and it ran smooth. We just had a bad head gasket eventually, but... Anyway, so here's the rehab of the pan. You got to get that rope seal out. That's the front. That's the crankshaft seal on the front. 
And then this was really the extent of the debris and gunk in the in the pan, which was pretty impressive. As you can see, here's the pan itself. There's the dipper tray. So you see those basins, those are for oil. And the oil dippers on the crankshaft pick up oil from there because this is a non-pressurized oiling system. All right, next I took a break from the engine work and decided to grease all of my points in front. And by the way, none of them were dry, which is an excellent sign. Now I do have a little bit of kingpin wear, uh, particularly on the driver's side, but we'll address that later on. It's, it's not terrible, but I definitely feel a little bit of slop. So I know that those kingpin holes are a little bit ovalized. Here's the oil pump going in, you guys. Here's that oil pan rope seal, just getting a little trim. And I like to use silicone when I'm putting new gaskets in. First of all, it positively locates the gasket, doesn't allow it to slip so much, and it fills in all those little imperfections. All right, now back to the stud repair. Here is the Time Cert Thread Repair Kit. And I'll put a link in the show notes if you need one of these. But man, this is an awesome kit. So you can see it contains a drill bit, a counter bore bit, then a tap and a driver, and finally the inserts. You'll see that later. But this is an amazing kit. So I had to build this jig to steady this drill guide. I wanted it perfectly flat and I didn't want it to move. So I just used the existing head studs and the wood blocks put some pressure on the drill guide, held it in place so that I could drill a nice straight hole. And I took it very carefully, as you can see. Uh, the blue tape is obviously a depth guide. When you're doing something like this, preparation is key because you don't have a second chance. You want to get it right the first time. All right, well, let's pull this off and see what we've got. Hopefully I drilled that just right. Yeah, that looks nice and clean. All right, now it's time to countersink, and you'll see why we're doing this. The insert has to go in, and therefore we need that countersink. But anyway, this is sped up, of course. But uh, I was nice and gentle with it. I didn't force it. And along the way, I used compressed air to blow off all of the shavings. I always have compressed air handy. And there's the countersink, nice and clean. Camera's picking up a few imperfections in the bore and, and on the edge there, but no big deal. Okay, now it's time to tap it. So the time cert kits, of course, come with the specific tap for your engine, whether it's a Model A or a 351 Windsor. And I just took it nice and easy. You know, when you're tapping a hole, you want to turn it a couple times and then back off. And you're cleaning out all that gunk, all those shavings. And look at those nice threads there. All right, now it's time to put the insert in. Now, this is what my stud is going to bite onto. We've eliminated the factory threads, and now we're inserting the replacement threads. Now, when you turn the time cert down, this is the advantage of this kit. You get a little bit past the end, 
and it expands it at the bottom of the hole, and that insert is not coming out until you intentionally remove it. So that's a nice clean repair. Here goes the stud, and look at that. Like a glove, and we're good to go. Now that is going to take the torque we need to get that head installed. Okay, so on goes the gasket and the cylinder head. Getting close now. All right. Well, it was a long night, and it was time to torque all the nuts. I did it in stages. I think I did 45, then 50, then 55. And by the way, I eventually will go to 60 foot-pounds. I, I just need to get some break-in mileage and some heat cycles on it before I retorque the head. All right, the next day, or I don't know, maybe a couple days later, we rolled her out. We had some nice sunshine. And on goes the new water pump. You know, I wanted to save my old water pump and reinstall it, but it does need a rebuild. This was just a much easier way to go, and it was going to get me on the road that much faster and considerably less expensive, I might add. Also, this is basically a maintenance-free water pump, so easy decision. All right, we're gonna torque that down. And then on go the bracing rods for the radiator. All right, well, you may have noticed that I've already installed the distributor here, but we're going to do the timing procedure here. So basically, you set the engine at top dead center. And then once you've set the engine at top dead center on number one cylinder, you loosen the center screw on the distributor and you turn this nifty tool called the New Rex wrench to the number four ignition terminal on the distributor cap. And there's an arrow on the new Rex tool. You'll see that in a second. And then you tighten everything down. And by the way, the new Rex wrench is like two turns, they recommend, just to take out any lash. Here I am reconfirming it. You can see that arrow there on the number four, right? All right, so tighten that down. Okay, so theoretically, we should be good to go for timing now. Number one at top dead center and distributor set. All right, so here you go. The arrow is at number four, and you can see there's directions right on the tool. How cool is that? All right, now let's look at the points. Here are my ignition points right there. See it's open. All right, we're good to go. Yep, there it is. She's open. Okay. On goes the rotor. And then the distributor cap. I got this nifty, clear distributor cap. It looks so cool at night because you can see all the sparks. But even during the day, you can, you can see everything rotating. Pretty cool. All right. Spark plugs in. Now, I just want to set the tension here on all of these ignition straps and next it was time to put the manifolds back on so I got some copper manifold gaskets there some composite gaskets in fact this is really straightforward there's only four bolts but actually it's not the greatest design what you really want is a bolt at either end and 
we didn't quite have that. All right, next, connecting the muffler to the exhaust manifold. And the Model A exhaust is really simple. It's a single piece exhaust that bolts to the manifold. That's it. Not the greatest flange arrangement, by the way. It's kind of tough to seal up, but on goes the carburetor. That's all been rebuilt. Nice and clean inside. These carburetors are super simple. There's really nothing to them. Think about it. They're gravity fuel fed. Single barrel, single circuit, essentially. All right, now we connect up the choke lever and what they call the gas valve. Really a mixture control valve. There's a needle valve in the bottom of that rod. If you spin it counterclockwise, you can dump more fuel into the carburetor on greater demand. And then pop the fuel line onto the carb. That's a half inch fitting. And I want to tighten all of these up. Super simple, right? Okay, fuel valve on. Let's fill up the sediment bowl and check for some leaks at the carb. They do tend to overflow. You want to keep that valve off when you're not driving the car. All right, time to hook up the fan belt and the generator. Good deflection. And finally, let's tighten up that battery cable to the starter and see what she does. Hmm. All right, well, she didn't start right away. So what I did was I repeated my timing procedure and I found that it was a little bit off. Well, that's it. The Model A is back on the road. We're going to have a lot of fun with this car, so stay tuned. Like and subscribe, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.